Good morning, good morning. morning. It's so good to be together, Amen? amen? My name is Daniel, and I'm the pastor here at the McCordsville United Methodist Church. I want to welcome you all that have gathered here in person to our 930 hour of worship, and also welcome those that are gathering online to our 930 hour of worship. Our hope and our prayer is on this Palm Sunday that we would not just be rejoicing Christ aloud with our mouths, but that the the joy of of Christ would just be erupting from our hearts and that we would experience his joy this day. Amen? Amen. 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 I do have some important uh, tidbits to share with you, some important information. Uh, uh, Before I forget, the trustees will be having a very brief meeting following the service. Please make note if you are a trustee. And uh, Lee will have folks gather here in the sanctuary uh, for that brief meeting. Also, next Sunday from 8.30 to 9.30, we will have a breakfast in preparation for Easter. Because we need our bellies full as Methodists to worship the Lord for Easter. 8.30 to 9.30 is when that breakfast will be. And also, please take note that we're going to be having a joint service next week. And it will be at 10 o'clock. No worries if you show up at 9.30, you just get to hang out with us a little bit longer. But 10 o'clock is when we will be having a a single joint service for Easter to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen to that. Also, following uh, next week's service, we will, at 11.15, we will be having a Easter egg hunt for the kids. We'll need some folks to help, uh, help line Pendleton Pike to make sure none of our Easter egg uh, children end up on that road. But please, please take note of that. Invite your friends and family. Next week is going to be a celebration uh, of the resurrection. The, the choir is going to be sharing a cantata. It is going to be fabulous. So please mark your calendars next week, 10 o'clock. Also, on Friday, which happens to be Good Friday, at 6.30, we will be having a service. It'll be a time of remembrance, a time for us to to have communion together and to reflect upon the the cross of Jesus Christ. And that will be at 6.30 on Friday. And with that, let us continue this time of worship with our call to worship. As... Just kidding on that point. (laughs) You guys are doing good. (laughs) Yeah, we do the same call to worship almost every Sunday. So as soon as I said that, it just like, we all moved into motion. I, I love it. I love it. But we have something unique prepared for this Palm Sunday. As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I'm serious. I'm sorry. We're, we're the most prepared church people around. If you will, turn your hymn books to hymn number 278. Hymn number 278, let's stand as we sing, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. children's 
now would you join me in the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified dead and buried the third day he rose from the dead he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church the communion of Saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen It is so nice to have a big crowd. I just love it. Okay, today is Palm Sunday. Today is the Sunday that we celebrate Jesus going back into Jerusalem. And they were waving palm branches at him, which was a sign of respect and honor. But in just a short time, they were going to nail him on the cross. And they put a crown of thorns on him. Now, have you ever thought about that? Have you ever been stuck by a thorn? Like you pick a rose or something and you get stuck? That smarts, doesn't it? Yeah, that hurts. Well, have you ever thought about how they put this on Jesus' head? And they didn't just sit it on his head. They put it on his head and then they shoved it down. Now that would hurt, wouldn't it? That would hurt. And he hadn't done anything. Have you ever gotten in trouble for something that you didn't do? Yeah. It's not much fun, is it? It's not much fun. Well, Jesus hadn't done anything except God's will. And they put this crown on his head. Do you want to feel it? Feel it. Look at that. Yeah, easy, because it'll hurt. See these thorns? That smarts. That would really smart, wouldn't it? We got that ten thorns before. Mm-hmm. Well, that would hurt, wouldn't it? That would hurt. But he did this for us. For us. And we are, should be very thankful for that. Now, since we're not going to be having a children's moment next week because it's, we've got a lot going on, I brought a little surprise for you guys, okay? I found these quite a while ago. Now, this is a bank also. So when you get the Tootsie Rolls out, you can have a bank where you can put some money in, okay? <laughs> and keep it. And you can bring it back to church or you can save it for something that you really, really want. 
Something like that, okay? What? You don't like Tootsie Rolls, okay. Mom or Dad might. Yeah. Oh, I think you will go ahead and take it for him, okay? You already? Well, you got two now. <laughs> Here's one for Carter. Did I miss any kids? <laughs> I saw you, Cor I see you. <laughs> well, okay. I thank you. And you know what, kids? I love each and every one of you very dearly. Very dearly. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for these children. They are so very, very precious. Watch over them and lead them and guide them and keep them safe in everything they do and bring them back to us, for we love them dearly and they are our future. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks, kids. Good luck, honey. <laughs> Glad those chuck. Hey! Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, wait a <laughs> <laughs> hey, what? Yeah. Much appreciated. Oh, look at it. Yeah. Starting a trend, Tim. Oh, oh it is so good. You know, I, I'm still just blessed by the way our service today has started. Tim had worked up this new intro, and you can't call us Methodist, right? I mean, or should you call us Methodist? Because every week we have a method, and every week we have majesty, and Jill really wanted to play that today. Yeah, it's a good song. It's a great, great. Well, it's good to be together. Uh, today, I also want to make mention, uh, now that the kids have gone, after the service, we do need some help stuffing eggs for that Easter egg hunt that I mentioned. So please, after the service, if you're willing to help us stuff a bunch of eggs, uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of eggs, and, then, and down this hallway there's an adult study and uh, another room there that will be stuffing those eggs. So after the service, please hang out just a little bit longer. But joys, do we have any joys that we'd like to share? Any joys? Uh, yes. June 1st will be our, uh, a women's banquet, and uh, we've done one of these some years back, and it was just an extraordinary time, um, but, uh, but us men will get the opportunity to, to be the servers, and man, I tell you what, we do good, don't we, Tim? Yeah, that's right. But June the 1st, it'll be a women's banquet, and uh, uh, we'll have more details uh, incoming after the Easter holiday. Jill said we'll have uh, uh, some more information. Yes, Betty Lou? Yes. The lint was broken. They told me at the lint place I had to replace it because it couldn't be repaired. It was going to be between thirty-five and forty-five hundred dollars to replace it. Mercy. I made the mistake of saying something in front of Skip Janelle and JD Dave, and they tore the sucker apart and put it back together, and now it works. <laughs> worth of parts was going to be $3,500. I want to echo that. A couple of folks in the church helped Betty Lou out with the power lift. 
Uh, she had gotten an estimate of about $3,500 to fix it, but a couple guys, uh, uh, Skip and JD, uh, uh, came together and fixed it, and uh, $5 in parts is all it costs. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. I mean, that's great work. That really is great work. Yes? That is awesome. A friend of your uh, daughter's uh, named Danny had the kidney transplant and everything went well. That is so good to hear. That is great news, Marge. That is. Any other joys? Love good news. Yes. My joy is a few full kids. Few full kids, indeed. Wasn't that great? Indeed. Even though Luke kept saying to us, there's no room for me over there. <laughs> Anderson, though, offered for him to be able to sit on his lap, but no. <laughs> Any other joys? Yes, over here. I want to thank Nathan for bringing me a five-gallon bucket full of cash for the uh, Dragon Hospital. That is awesome. The Masons and the church got together and put together a five-gallon uh, uh, jug of those uh, pop tabs. Uh, I was wondering where those came from. I saw those in the fellowship hall, and I was like, that's a lot of pop. Yes. <laughs> That is great. Anything else? Anything else? Yeah. Joy, announcement, and prayer request. <laughs> um, after weeks of testing and all kinds of things, we've learned that God has a new plan for our family, and we're growing for another child. So baby number three, we have no idea when they're coming. It's either sometime in October, maybe November. They don't really know yet. So. I know that feeling very well. <laughs> Yeah, it is great news, and it is a wonderful joy. But it also is news that you're going, oh, there's another kid coming. And so, but definitely, definitely. Uh, Amy just shared that uh, she is pregnant, and there is a, a third child is on the way, and uh, an unexpected surprise. And, uh, but, uh, but congratulations, guys. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> and we as a church will be here for you. Indeed. Yes. Yes, indeed. You know, uh, uh, my family experienced a surprise. Jill experienced a surprise, you know, 10 years, and then uh, uh, their, her, uh, her final kid came along. And, uh, but yeah, definitely prayers and joys. Any prayer concerns that we have? Yeah. Definitely, Don. Uh, I want to echo both those. Uh, Don had uh, put together a, a handicap uh, center, handicap items to help folks that are uh, coming out of surgeries or having to do physical rehab and uh, anything from walkers to, to um, uh, canes and all points in between. Uh, but he collects those and gives those out uh, free of charge to those in need. And if you have any of those kinds of items, please see Don. But also, we do want to lift up uh, Tim Cooper, Nancy, Tracy, and the, the family. Um, and his father passed on uh, Friday night. And the services for that, uh, for him, are Wednesday, Thursday of this week. Wednesday is the showing. It'll be starting at uh, 3.30 um, and going to the, to the evening. And then the um, celebration of life for, for Larry will be on Thursday. And there will be a... Another hour of showing between 10 and 11, then at 11, we'll have that celebration of life for him. So definitely prayers uh, for, for the family. Definitely. Any other concerns? Yeah. Ray Ann Asher that we have had on our prayer list for quite a long time because of terminal cancer uh, passed away Friday. Uh, she was ready. children behind uh, who have no visible care at this point. So prayers for the family and prayers that she is in peace. Absolutely. 
and, and want to echo that again. Um, we've been praying for family Ray and Asher, and uh, and I believe uh, Asher had the terminal cancer and did pass. But there are three kids uh, that she's left has uh, left behind, and so definitely prayers for the family, and uh, just praying that God would send His people to be su the support that they need. Amen. Definitely. All right. Yes, Julie. Heather Stewart, definitely prayers for Heather Stewart. All right, well, let's pray together. Father, we just come before you here today, so thankful that you've called us to be a part of this congregation, to be here today to worship you. Father, we pray that the love that you are would just fill our hearts, fill our lives to the point of overflowing. Father, it's so easy for our lives to become full of so many things. But Lord, today we pray that it would be your love that we are filled with, that the people around us may experience a touch of your hand, experience what it means to be loved by you. Father, we pray for those in our congregation that are going through a time of grief. We pray for the Marvel family. We pray for the Cooper family. We pray for Asher's family, and we just pray that, God, that you would be with these families as they are looking to find that new normal. Father, we pray that you'd wrap your loving arms around those that are grieving and that you would just draw them closer to one another. Father, we pray that you would just wash over them with your presence. Lord, today we also pray for those in our community that are outside of a relationship with you, Jesus. And we pray that we as a congregation would be a light for them to see you, to experience your presence, to experience your forgiveness, to experience again, Father, your love. Father, John 3.16 tells us that, that you so love the world that you sent your son. God, help us to truly understand and experience that sort of love, that we may be people that, that know what it means to be forgiven, that we would be people that know what it means to look to the cross for our salvation. Father, we pray for this touch of your hand upon all of us here and those that are online. And now, Lord, we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful job. And uh, again, it's a little bit of a tease for next Sunday when the choir will be sharing a full cantata and uh, looking forward to it. You know, Amy, Greg, I, I, as you, uh, you shared that announcement, I had a flashback to when my wife made that announcement of Luke uh, coming along almost four years, uh, it's over four years ago. Uh, you might remember that announcement uh, that, that happened that Sunday. I didn't know my wife was pregnant, and my wife told me in front of the whole church. <laughs> I'm glad you found... Okay, you didn't know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if he was passed out, I would have understood. Yeah, man. Welcomed or unwelcomed? This comes from Matthew chapter 21. And we'll get to that and some other uh, verses here in a bit. But Mother Teresa, she said it all so well. She said, loneliness and the feeling of being unwanted is the most terrible of poverties. Hmm. You know, something that has become apparent to me in living life is that people can often feel just like what Mother Teresa put all so well there. Feeling lonely and unwanted. Feeling lonely and unwelcomed. Feeling lonely and as if they just don't belong. What else has become apparent is that when folks feel this way, they typically don't wear it on their sleeves. Some do for sure, but most try to mask this feeling. Most try to cover up uh, their insecurities, uh, uh, put a facade on and, and keep the real them hidden and tucked away. And fear that if they were themselves, if they were to let the real personality come out, that they would be rejected. And, and that feeling of being lonely and unwanted and unwelcomed would hollow out their hearts even more. Uh, so folks hide behind things like humor and success and image and money and power and you name it. Folks find whatever mask that they can find to hide the most terrible poverty of all, loneliness and feeling unwanted and feeling unwelcome. You know, all of this hit me as my family and I crossed the threshold of our condo uh, down near the edge of Fort Walton, West Destin, about a week ago. Uh, the condo appeared from the Airbnb page uh, to be the perfect spot for a family of five to have some R&R. &R. Yeah, well, some R&R &R and some fun. <laughs> The, the condo promised high-speed internet. It, it promised a heated pool with a, a waterfall. It, it promised quiet time uh, from 10 p.m. on. It, it promised hot water uh, to take uh, showers or a bath. Uh, you know, the, the listing, it, it promised and promised and promised and promised. After our third day at the condo from, <clears throat> I chuckled to myself as I crossed the mat in front of the condo's door that said, welcome, because that was the only place that I, my family, even had a thought that we were welcome, that we belonged there. What we thought was a family resort for families with kids happened to be a resort for spring breakers. One night it got so bad that folks were spring breaking at the pools below our condo until about 1 a.m. Yeah, screaming and hollering things that should not have been heard by anyone at all, especially not my kids. Yeah. And then to top it off, the hot water only worked five minutes at a time. Yeah. And then the, the other thing was, it was like we were trapped in a prison because the internet was consistently down and our cell phones didn't have cell service. And the waterfall that my kids were so looking forward to was broken. Yeah. You know the feeling you get when you, you, you know you just don't fit? Like, this is, a, you know, or you just don't belong, you know? That you're just not welcome to be wherever it is that you happen to be? Yeah, that's how my entire family felt for the first few days of our vacation. My kids couldn't use the pool at will in fear of older kids, <coughs> college students, jumping on top of them in the pool. And the beach was a journey to the other side of the earth, so it felt. 
It's a hollowing feeling, feeling out of place, isn't it? Uh, feeling lonely, even when you're around people. It's, uh, it hurts to the core when we feel as if we we're unwelcome. So what we did, what I did, is I got a hold of Airbnb and we moved condos. Oh, yeah. We ended up packing up the entire family in two hours flat and moved from our location at Fort Walton up to Navarre to what they call the Redneck Riviera. And that, let me tell you, my family, we fit right in. <laughs> That's right. Not a spring breaker in sight. Yes. Uh. The beach was feet away. The hot water, it worked. There was a bathtub the size of a hot tub in this condo. We were facing the ocean and not pools full of spring breakers. And let me tell you, the internet worked. <laughs> at condo number two, we were right at home. We felt like we belonged there. And ended our vacation just as we had sought with some good old R&R. On the side of fun. One of the best feelings we as people can have is when we feel as if we belong. Feel as if we are truly part of something greater than ourselves. Feel as if we are wanted. Feel as if we are valued. Feel as if we are seen as being essential. Seen as an invaluable part of the group. There really is nothing like feeling wanted, valued, desired, welcome. And the place on earth where this feeling should be most known above every other place imaginable is church. Yet this isn't always the case. For the church is made up of people. And unless we are being intentional very intentional about making others feel wanted and valued and welcome, we can default into that other gear, that fallen self gear, that gear where we aren't necessarily doing the Lord's work, but the devil's. Which brings us to a passage that captures the church pre-Pentecost, the Jews at their best, and welcoming Jesus to Jerusalem. Let's check this out. And why don't you stand with me for this portion of the reading of God's Word. This is Matthew chapter 21, verses 6 through 11. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey, the colt, and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we ask in this continued time of preaching and teaching that you, by your Holy Spirit, would bring the inspiration. You, Holy Spirit, inspired the writing of these words I just shared. And I pray today, we pray today, that you would bring the inspiration to the preaching of this word. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. May be seated. You've heard the phrase, rolling out the red carpet? Well, much of Jerusalem, minus the overly critical and negative religious folks known as the Pharisees, <laughs> well, they rolled out the carpet for Jesus. This moment, this Palm Sunday as we refer to it, was what all of Jesus' ministry was leading to. Everything he did built up to this grand moment where he, the Messiah, where he, the Messiah, would enter Jerusalem and officially initiate the taking back, or so people thought, of God's kingdom from Rome. 
All of the healings, all of the teachings, all of the parables, all of the miracles were leading to this moment that the Messiah would take his throne, or so they thought, in Jerusalem. This was believed to be the grandest event that Jerusalem had seen since David became king over Saul. Solomon's temple, that too had some excitement around it. But the hype and the excitement would have been palpable. People had waited for a David-like king to be enthroned in Israel and Jerusalem since around 962 BCE. Almost a thousand years to capture the sense of excitement. April the 8th happens to be a historic day. What happens on April the 8th? Anyone know? Well, it just so happens to be National Zoo Day. It's not what I'm really talking about, but it is. It is. April the 8th is the day in the mid-afternoon that there's going to be a what? A total solar eclipse. You heard about it? Yeah. Seen the glasses at Meyer? I heard you can get a free pair at the town hall, so I hear. Hmm. But according to NASA, a total solar eclipse happens when the moon passes between the sun and earth, completely blocking the face of the sun. People viewing the eclipse from locations where the moon's shadow completely covers the sun, known as the path of totality, will experience a total solar eclipse. The sky will darken as if it were dawn or dusk. Weather permitting, people along the path of totality will even see the sun's corona, or outer atmosphere, which is usually obscured by the bright face of the sun. And let me tell you, People are a bit excited about it. Uh, there's expected to be thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people coming to hang out with us in the Fishers, Carmel, Geist, Fortville, and McCordsville area. There are some legitimate concerns about what traffic shall be like that day. One trooper put it, think about a dozen or a hundred and... Bill will appreciate this. Purdue football games. Maybe I should have said IU or Notre Dame. Purdue football games, he says, distributed around the state. He says you got people that kind of file in gradually to these viewing areas over several hours. Maybe even over a day. But then, when it's over... They are all going to leave, and probably at the same time. Well, in a similar fashion, news got out that Jesus was coming to town, and folks came out in droves to roll out the red carpet for the long-awaited Messiah. They didn't exactly roll out carpet, but they did lay tunics and palm branches upon the streets, a, a symbol of their great respect and honor for this King Jesus. And as he approached, I'm sure some sort of took a second glance at this, what they thought was supposed to be a military might <laughs> that was to be the commander of the army of Israel when he came riding not on some noble steed, <laughs> but on a donkey. <laughs> Hmm. And as he rode, they all shouted what? Say it with me. Hosanna! Hosanna! Which is a good strong indicator as to who they thought this Jesus was. And what he come to town to do. Anyone know the meaning of the word Hosanna? Hmm. It quite literally means, save us, we beseech thee. Or, pray, save us. Jesus was welcomed like royalty that day. Of all the welcomes any of us have ever received from loved ones and friends, I don't think a one of us has ever experienced a welcome like that. Emmaus gets a little close. and I've heard when veterans attend the honor flight where they get to go to the memorial in Washington and come home, they too, and rightfully, receive a mighty pleasant welcome. But this, 
welcome that Jesus experienced tops the cake. Whole families and surrounding towns gathered in hopeful expectation of freedom. And then, did they churn on him on a dime? Carolyn alluded to this, pointed to this earlier. One minute, they were Jesus' biggest fan, right? Biggest fan. And then the next, well, let's hear it from the word itself. Goes from Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest to crucify him. Crucify him. Huh. Pilate even asked, why? What, what crime has this man committed? But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Don't feel like shouting that one, do you? They even took it a step further when Pilate challenged them and they, they said, and as a group, said his blood is on us and on our children. Huh. You know, Isaiah, he got it right when he penned hundreds of years before this that this Messiah was to be despised and rejected by mankind. That he would be a man of suffering and someone familiar with pain. Be like one from whom people hide their faces. He says he was despised and we held him the Messiah in low esteem. Hmm. Where the shift in the public sentiment happened is, well, it's when Jesus didn't behave like the people thought he should. He didn't do what they wanted him to. And Jesus, he didn't meet their standard or their expectation. Hmm. Jesus made true the statement that C.S. Lewis weaved into line which in the wardrobe of Jesus when he said of Aslan, and the people didn't like it, but he made this true. He said, Mr. Beaver talking to the kids, says, of course he's not safe. Talking of Aslan, Jesus. But he's good. He's the king, I tell you. <laughs> Aslan, Jesus, is not a tame lion. Not a safe lion. He regularly disrupts our human plans. And Jesus did so for the people in the first century. They wanted a warrior knight. And what they got was a sacrificial lamb. What behavior, what deed am I referring to that changed the public sentiment from Hosanna to crucify him? Well, Jesus, the sacrificial lamb, he still had a little buck in him, a little kick. Does anyone remember the first thing Jesus did when he got to Jerusalem? Coming right after the last verse of our main passage this morning, this is what Jesus did when he came to town. He entered the temple courts and he drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, Jesus said to him, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. And so he was rejected. He was despised. He was unfollowed. He was denied. I don't think we as a church consider what this would have been like for Jesus enough. We think of him often just in terms of him being divine. But he was also very much human. He was also a man with real emotions. This makes me think of a line in a song sung by one Frank Sinatra, That's Life. <laughs> That's life. That's what all the people say. You're riding high in April and what? Shot down in May. 
riding high on Palm Sunday, and was Jesus shot down on Good Friday? Let me say it like this. Jesus is someone who gets what it's like to be human. He knows what it's like to be unwanted. He knows what it's like to be rejected. He knows what it's like to be betrayed. He knows what it's like to not feel as if you belong. He knows what it's like to be stuck in the condo from Hebrew chapter Hebrews chapter 4 nails it It says we do not serve a high priest who is unable to empathize I believe one of the crowning glories of humanity is just that the ability to empathize the ability to step in the shoes of another, the ability to feel deeply what another is feeling. And Jesus did that in the most difficult of ways for us. He, for us, took on rejection. He, for us, took on abandonment. He, for us, took upon himself the feeling of being unwanted, unloved, and unwelcome. He did so so that we would not have to live under the weight and shame of all of that. He did so that we, when those feelings try to creep upon us, that we can shed them off by His grace and take by faith His yoke upon us instead. Where in the world we may at times feel unwanted and unwelcome, but by faith in His arms... Folks, we are always, no matter what we've done, no matter what we've been through, we are always welcome in His arms. We are always loved by Him. We are always valued by Him. The late Timothy Keller went so far to frame up this idea in saying, says the gospel is this. We are more sinful and flawed in ourselves than we ever dared believe. I don't like that part. Yet at the same time, I love this. He says we are more loved and accepted in Jesus Christ than we ever dared hope. The world frowns upon our brokenness. The world paints and jabs at our sinfulness. The world says that because of our flaws that we are unwanted and unwelcome. And God says the complete opposite. He sees past all our warts and imperfections and all of our failures and insecurities. And He loves us. He loves and accepts you more than you ever dared hope. That is the core of what we believe as Christians. This is the starting point of what it means to follow Him. is to experience that love that He is and that He has for us. The world, man, it can be a cruel place. And as we've seen with the religious chanting one day to Jesus, Hosanna, and then another, crucify him. Oh, times religious and church can do. I know people have been hurt by the church before, and I'm not talking about this church. I'm just talking about church. I'm a preacher's kid. I know things. (laughs) What we as a congregation must strive for is to beat to a different drummer than all that. To beat to the tune of Christ. We are called by Him to not adopt the world's ideas of acceptance and rejection. 
we are called rather to extend the acceptance and love of Christ that we have received from him. We are to extend that to all we encounter. We are to extend that to those that are in the pews next to us week to week and those guests whom the Lord leads to us as well. Many times people, well, they come to church rather banged up from living life. Amen, anyone? We are called to meet their hurts and rejections with our Lord's example of empathy and compassion. Being a Christian does not give us a go and be as cruel as you want to be card because you're forgiven. No. Being a Christian means we step empathetically into the hurts of others and pray God uses us as a graceful salve that's needed to bring healing to their lives, to bring healing to the wounds of others. We are quite literally meant to be, and this goes all the way back to that condo from... We are quite literally meant to be the welcoming mat of God where people feel from us what his heart is beating for them, that they are wanted, that they are valued, that they are important, that they are essential, that they are welcome. In closing, let me just say, if you in life have felt or feel like my family and I did at that particular condo I keep referring to, no, there's another place for you and your family to stay. And I'm not referring to the wondrous redneck Riviera Navarre. But rather you, by God's grace, are invited by him every moment of every day to stay, to be at home. In the loving arms of Christ. That's where we are to live. We as a church aren't perfect. Just go back and watch the first three minutes of our service today. <laughs> it, it went, I, I won't ever forget it. Jill, you really like majesty. Yeah. I do too. I, we as a church aren't perfect. But something I do believe that we strive for is to, in our own way, extend this welcome that we have all received from Christ to others. I won't forget, when we first came, Alice came up to my family and I, and she, she welcomed us with open arms. And it was people like Alice that set the stage for how we still are today to welcome folks with open arms. May we this day renew our commitment not to rejection and not to a critical spirit. There's enough of that in the world. Not to a how dare you not be me-ism. Enough of that too. But renew our commitment to others that which we've received from Christ. Renew our commitment to love, to acceptance, to the welcoming of all that God leads our way, that they may too know what it's like to be home here in the arms of Christ. Tim. Let's close and take our hymn books to hymn number 359. Alas, and did my Savior bleed. Let's stand as we sing the first, second, and the last stanzas of hymn number 359. It was 
was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day was it for crimes that I have done he groaned upon the tree amazing pity grace unknown and love beyond decree at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day but drops of grief can ne'er repay the debt of love I owe here Lord I give myself away tis all that I can do at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day let's pray together father we're just so thankful that you have led us to be together here with one another and with you Father, we pray that as we prepare to go from this place, that you would just continue to work your love and your grace deep within our minds, deep within our hearts. We pray that the love that we speak about as Christians, we pray that they wouldn't just be in ideas shared and words upon pages, but that the love that you have for us, that we would know, we would know to the depths of our being. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. just George and I. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And also, trustees, don't forget, brief. Lee has emphasized to me, brief meeting after service. In the words of our good friend, Mr. Jim Turney. To God be the glory, and to Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. To God be the glory, and Jesus Christ our Savior as we grow with him. So folks, let's grow with God and let's keep on praising him. Amen. Next week, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. 8.30 for breakfast. 10 o'clock for worship.